Welcome to the 100th video in this series. We're now ready to start a major milestone and that is getting rid of the input polling and actually adding an input thread into the program. To do that we need some way of actually creating the threads and writing the threading code in Vice and this used to many years ago be a bit of a pain because depending on whether it was Unix or Windows you had to write more or less completely different code. However over the years quite a few repositories have appeared on GitHub which actually do that job for you and have essentially written wrappers so that you don't need to worry about the different platforms and it makes threading sort of more or less cross-platform platform let's say. In the Discord a while ago somebody pointed out to me that there's this uh, tiny C thread library which is extremely lightweight and does everything that we're actually going to need with threading inside Vice so I've decided to use that. I'll put the link in the description it's github.com forward slash tiny C thread forward slash tiny C thread. I've got the code open in front of me here. What you need to do is inside the source folder you need to get hold of the tiny C thread dot C and the tiny C thread dot H to be able to follow along with the code that we're about to do. Now I've been through these in quite a bit of detail myself. I'm not going to do it in front of you because you can read it. There is somewhere down here in the readme a docs. So if I click on the tinycthread.github.io, we've got the description here. There's not much documentation on actually using it. However, there is the API reference inside here. And it's some of the functions inside this API reference that we're going to be using. It says down the bottom here, a good place to start is tinycthread.h, which is true. And what you can do inside here is find all of the, the main functions that are involved in actually uh, using the tinycthread library, creating threads and doing all the stuff like that. The one function we're going to be using is this thread create here. And I'm now going to jump over to a couple of slides I've prepared to explain exactly how we're going to be using it. So you might remember that I've already in some of the previous videos or in one of the previous videos showed you this slide to explain the concept of what we're going to do. So we're going to have a major thread, let's say, or the main thread, which is thread one. And that's the thread that's our UCI.C effectively, where we're listening for some input, we set things up, and then we get the go command. When we get this go command, that is where we're going to use tiny C thread to create our search thread. We're going to copy a load of data, we're going to search, and then we're going to stop the search when we get a signal. The thread that's listening for input is going to, after the go command, just go straight back to the while loop in the main UCI uh, function, where it's just going to listen for any command. When it gets a stop or a quick command, it's then going to wait for thread two to finish. That'll be very, very quick. It'll be blocked, but it'll be waiting. And once it's done that, depending on whether it was stop or quit, it'll then decide what to do. So what we're going to start creating is this launching of the search thread. The way we're going to create the thread is using the thread create in tiny c thread and that takes three arguments. The first one is a point to the identifier for the thread. So we're going to create a variable outside this and send that variable in and inside create thread that identifier will get set. It's important to have this set because we're going to call the join i.e. the wait for it to finish by joining or waiting for the thread with this identifier to complete. That might sound a little bit more complicated than it actually is. You'll see how it works inside the code. The second argument is a, a pointer and that pointer will point to a function that we supply in the argument. So when the thread is created, this function that's set as the second argument will be the function that is executed when the thread is created. The third argument is a void pointer. In other words, it could be a, it's a pointer to anything. We have to cast it when we actually start the thread, but that will contain any information that we want to actually send to the thread. So for example, the position or the hash table or something like this. When the function is called, it has this data passed to it as an argument. So in very, very simple code, how will that actually look? Well, on line one here, we have a function which doesn't do anything apart from just return zero, but we'll just call it my function. On line two, we have our thread identifier here. And on line three, we have a point to some data. Now here I've just called it some data. It could be anything, our, our chest position, some numbers, a menu of burgers or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. It's just a pointer to some information. So when we call thread create, we get the identifier for our thread. We call our function and we've sent our function some data, some arbitrary data, which we're then going to have to cast inside the function to get that data out. When that thread's been created, that's a separate thread. So our program, our main thread that's running this code carries on straight away. So it goes through the empty line six, there's nothing there, but then we've got this thread join at line seven. So this thread will now block here and wait on this thread identifier th until that thread is completed. In other words, my function has exited. And once that's completed, it's then going to carry on with the rest of the program. The way we're going to do that inside our program is actually wait for a stop command. And when we get the stop command, we're then going to call this join 
on our thread here so that we then block and wait for the thread to finish if the thread is running at all and that will be dealt for us thank goodness behind the scenes that means that we're going to launch our thread much like we have done here but we're not going to instantaneously wait. We're going to launch the thread and then go back into listening for input. And it's only when we get the stop or the quit that we're actually going to do the joining operation and wait for the thread to end. Now, if you're really, really confused, you've no idea how this is going to work, don't worry. It's a lot simpler probably than I've explained it. And in the next video, we can actually get on with coding this.